Howdy y'all, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. I recently had someone ask me why I always present the current narrative. And they said, if I keep looking at the current narrative, I'm never going to figure out any of the answers that I'm looking for. But much to the contrary, I believe if you look at the current narrative, it allows you to see holes in the story that they've created. And you can find different things about the history of these places that does not make sense and this is where i want to begin today now we're going to talk about tim god or tim gold and this is a roman fortress that was built in algeria but i never heard of this place before and I only discovered it when I was reading through a book called The Wonders of the Past, The Romance of Antiquity and Its Splendors from 1923. And this book, I had originally planned to basically go through a bunch of these wonders that I had never heard of before and discuss them, um, you know, in a video with multiple different subjects. But what I came to find is that right from the get go, the first place that was listed in the entire book by itself was worthy of its own video. And it was a place that I had never heard discussed before. But the author of this book from 1923 was adamant that these ruins were the greatest Roman ruins in existence in the entire world. And this is considering Rome itself. You know, these ruins are said to be more well preserved than anything else in the entire world and I had never heard of this area before so I was taken back and instantly I was wondering if any photographs of this place existed and while it's been quote unquote excavated throughout the last hundred or so years you will come to find that there are countless old photographs and I'm just going to present them to you in this video I'm going to go over the current narrative about Tim God because this place um, and the immense nature of it and the construction and everything from the way the streets are made to all the pillars around the city to the basically fortress that is buried under the earth that could be anywhere from 10 to upwards of 40 feet tall depending on how deep the blocks go so we'll look at some photographs of this but first i'm going to show you this narrative and how it doesn't really make a lot of sense so according to the current narrative tim god was founded ex nilio which means founded out of nothing and that was a roman expression that they used but this is what's used in the current narrative founded ex nilio in 100 ce and it was a roman fort that was quote unquote built for defense against the berbers now they say that this fort and this area was populated mainly by roman veterans and it consisted of upwards of 10,000 people and it was mainly romans but there was also a mixture of africans who lived there as well and in the same paragraph that it says this place was populated by roman veterans it also says most of the people of tim god had never seen rome before so that's already one hole in the narrative how can they be veterans of rome and of the roman wars and have never seen rome before just very interesting and there has to be something left out but we're going to dive into it a little bit more because it says that Rome was heavily invested in making sure that Tim God represented the Roman culture. And the narrative says then basically they skip over a large period of time and they say for hundreds of years. So from 100 CE until about 500 CE, Tim God was a peaceful center for Christianity. And that's all that they say about it. Now, of course, something had to happen to destroy this city. So the narrative says it was sacked by the Vandals in the 5th century. And if you don't know, the Vandals are a 
German tribe. And they're interesting in their own right and would be worthy of talking about, but I can save that for another video. So they say that this area, which consisted of over 10,000 Romans and Africans living together in this beautiful fortress town, they say it was sacked by the Vandals at some time in the 5th century. And then they say a Roman general by the name of Solomon founded Timgod and it was abandoned in 535 CE. So at some point, basically the Vandals came in. They didn't want to take the area over. They basically took all the people and everybody left is how the narrative describes it. And then a Roman general came and found the area basically empty in 535. So then by the 6th century, it says that Rome repopulated Tim God. But they also say in the very last paragraph before this one, that Tim God was completely destroyed and abandoned in 535 when they found it. So they talk about nothing that it was rebuilt. They just say that it was repopulated and they say it was repopulated by a large group of Byzantine Christians. So at this point, we just have the Byzantine people or the later Roman people living here according to this narrative. And then they say the city was sacked again in the seventh century during the Muslim conquest and it was again destroyed. But if they never rebuilt it, then what exactly were they destroying on this second sack of the city? Now, I just found that to be interesting. There's already some loopholes there. And looking through these photographs, you'll be able to tell why I'm pointing these things out to you. Because I am of the belief that there's a lot more than just Roman architecture at play within this city. Now, how was it so well preserved? Well, according to the current narrative, since no one was there since the 7th century, somehow the Sahara Desert basically, and the word they used is encroached upon the site and buried it in up to three and a half feet of sand, leaving it miraculously preserved. So how did we or how did the common people, you know, people of our time, how did we find this site? It says nearly 1,000 years passed until 1765 when James Bruce reached the ruins and he described it and they use a quote from James Bruce in this narrative. He describes it as a small town full of elegant buildings. So if it was a town, that was completely destroyed twice and then it was left and completely abandoned and then it was covered in sand and covered in earth and this man James Bruce discovered it in 1765 why would he call it a small town full of elegant buildings if there would be no buildings there because if you look at the site now you can tell where the buildings were because there's megalithic columns and there's things that are buried. There's bricks that are massive and they stack up and create walls that are 30, 40 feet tall. But there are no structures there. There are no buildings there. So did something happen from when James Bruce arrived in 1765 until the next quote unquote explorer would arrive? Because you find that the narrative changes quite a bit and it is a long period of time before another quote-unquote explorer arrives at the area so this is what the narrative says basically this james bruce guy who reached this town in 1765 uh said it was you know full of all these buildings and he published a book and then another 100 years would pass until robert lampert Playfair, who was a British consul in the area, decided based off of James Bruce's original book from over a hundred years beforehand that he would finally visit the site in 1875. And then he is quoted as saying, These hills are covered with countless numbers of the most interesting 
megalithic remains. So you can see how when James Bruce arrived in 1765, he noticed that the town was full of elegant buildings and things that took his breath away, basically remarkable structures. But by the time that Robert Lampert Playfair arrived over 100 years later in 1875, he said it was basically just megalithic remains. So you can see that 110 year period, that could have been when this history was sort of changed and when things in the area were you can use the word excavated, but there are other words that I'd like to use that I'm not going to. Now it says in 1881, France comes in, even though it was Britain that apparently rediscovered this site. France comes into the area and takes control of Tim God, and they basically begin excavating it for themselves. And this carries on for roughly 80 years into the 1960s. So that was just a brief history about what they say about Tim God. However, I more am just taken back by the photographs that I found by this place. And I'm very thankful that luckily some of the earliest photographs of this area survive. Basically, these are going to be coming from right after the supposed gentleman Robert Lampert Playfair uh, visited this area in 1875. These are going to be late 1800s photographs and they're really, really remarkable. So let's just get right into it. Um, from the get go, the thing that shocked me right when I found this site is the size of the site and how well preserved everything is now you see a lot of structures that the romans supposedly built that we basically glorify and we act like they're the end all be all of roman architecture things like the Colosseum. when realistically i have never seen another basically roman city that is almost complete like Tim God was when they first discovered it. You can see in these photographs that the city is completely laid out and the ruins of almost every single building that existed in the city are still here. The pillars that held up these buildings and whether it was one massive, massive structure or fortress or small separate structures, it's really hard to decipher that. But it certainly can be argued that this was one massive fortress and it's just so incredible to me that we always hear from the old books that i read and even taught about it in schools that you know all roads lead to rome and there's so many different interpretations about that but one of the most uh direct i'd say interpretations would be is that our cities are laid out in a fashion that was created by the Roman people or that Roman cities were laid out in a similar fashion where they would have streets and cross streets. It would make everything more accessible. At least that is the whole idea as to why we use it today and why we adopted it from the Roman people. But there are no really good examples of a layout of a ancient Roman city besides Tim God. This is the most glorious example. You can see it. It's it's the entire city is there. And it's just so amazing to me that even in the you know research of Rome that I had done myself, I never seen any of these photographs before. Almost like whoever published it or keeps track of this information doesn't want it to be passed along that this might just be the greatest and most well-preserved Roman city in existence today. You can look at the brickwork and you can see we have, you know, different bricks and different areas and walls and retaining structures that are more rough and more stacked and they could be considered more ancient. But you also have structures here that were built with very fine detail and you have the use of the roman red brick which is telling of 
what type of people were occupying this area. The buried structures are also something I want to point out. You can see how at least in the 1800s when they were first photographing this area, there was structures that were being discovered still to that time period and they were being dug out and even the theater itself is something i want to point out because that appears to go completely into the ground and it has basically the same construction as the modern day stadiums that we see beginning in the early 1900s in the united states uh, where they would basically take these massive blocks and create sort of earth mounds and then they would put the seats on the inside on the slope created by the earth mound and you can see here that they have these huge blocks these blocks are you know the size of these humans almost twice the size of these humans they probably weigh at least a ton each and we have them just stacked on stacks on stacks going into this hill and this hill basically creates the outside of this theater so that's something i wanted to point out to you because this city of tim god seems to be full of these buried structures and these are only the remnants of the structures so we can only imagine if this was excavated properly what we would have actually been able to find here the pillars are large they're looking anywhere from 30 to 40 feet uh some of them probably a little bit smaller but the idea that they're all uniform and they all basically make a symmetrical sort of pattern in the city leads me to believe that they were all sort of like, um, you know, like row houses, like townhouses, like connected to one another, almost like it was a large fortress, like one large structure, one large community that was erected at the same time. It had to have been to be built like this. So that's something else that I find very interesting is that they say that this Tim God place basically was created ex nihilo or out of nothing, out of nowhere, out of thin air is what the expression actually means. So basically you're telling me that Rome sent a bunch of their old and retired veterans to Algeria and said, build me a fort. And what they got was this superstructure and it's just everything about the history makes you want to go back in time and find out the truth because what the narrative says simply cannot tell the full story or anything close to it and i assume there were a lot of changes made throughout time you have these perfect streets down to the blocks that are laid in the street they are completely flat even to this day, it wasn't excavation or anything like that that leveled out the streets. This is a area that was completely, perfectly flat, laid out with these megalithic bricks or these megalithic stones on every road. And every road was completely straight, completely perfect. And it's just so amazing to think about what this would have looked like back when it was first completed and first constructed. You'll see that there's underground passageways throughout Tim God, and there's all of this interesting artwork all around. They have these statues, and even the brickwork is intricate. There's designs within the brickwork, not something that uh, I commonly think about when I think about Roman construction. And that's something I think of more of in like the Middle East and over into India. That's something you see in their ancient buildings a lot, but you will see there's a mixture, it seems like, of a lot of these different cultures. You can see a lot of the Indian and Middle Eastern influence, but you also have like the Corinthian sort of pillars and that sort of Romanesque influence within these buildings or these ruins as well. Now, I found a lot of pictures that seems to show the excavators or the explorers of this time focused on these sort of antiquitech looking things. And they seem to be devices that would sit on top of some of these pillars. 
or maybe that's what they were used for at a later time but all that i could figure out that these devices would be used for would be some sort of light or possibly a stone furnace maybe they put something inside that would burn but if you can think of anything from these photographs or if it looks like anything different to you please let me know in the comments now another thing that's interesting is even in these ruins you can see that the interior of these buildings had intricate crown molding which is another influence that i think comes more from the middle east and from the muslim territory than from rome it's not something that we necessarily saw a lot in roman buildings and especially the designs within these walls it certainly appears to be something that was coming from the middle east now there are some buildings that remained in this area and they include church-like structures that have the bell towers that we've been focused on a lot recently and there's also ancient from you know the time that this land was first occupied they have the original sundials that were in Tim God. And I found that to be really interesting because the whole idea of modernizing timekeeping was another thing that was really manifested in the Middle East. So I do see a lot of Middle Eastern and Berber and African influence when I look into Tim God. And it's just a very beautiful, old world sort of city that i can definitely make the argument that it comes from a culture of unified people it contains most definite earth flooded remains and buried structures that aren't exactly described in the current narrative that we're given so hopefully these images were interesting to you and i'd like to hear your thoughts and comments down below let me know your thoughts on the amazing fortress or ancient roman algerian city of timgod and i will see you on the next video